Hello everyone, my name is Caleb and I want to give you guys a tour of my beautiful Victorian home. Uh, it was built in 1889 by Charles S. Brown and I'm going to give you a lantern lit tour in the dark by myself of the whole place. So uh, let me show you the front and we'll get inside. So here is the front of the building. As you can see, it's quite beautiful. Got the mansard roof. This is a second empire structure building. As you can see, it's got quite a bit of decay, but it's been uh, abandoned for uh, quite a few years, since 2008. Uh, so uh, I've been doing a little bit of work on it, but let's go see inside as I turn my lantern on. So here at the front doors, let's push them open and go inside. So here's the entryway. Beautiful lights here, or beautiful woodwork here. All original. As we come inside, you see one of the original fixtures here in the house. All the medallions and plaster work. My original beautiful staircase. It's all quarter sawn oak. So lots of tiger striping, and it's really beautiful. Some really ornate little plaster work over here as well. So this is the formal parlor, where if you were a guest of the families, you'd be here. I have some light fixtures in here. And the original lady of the house, her name was Sarah Brown. She was an organist. So of course I got myself a pump organ because of course you cannot not have that. So let me set my lamp here and I'll show you what it sounds like. No, no musician, but still pretty cool, I think. So I am missing a few key elements, one of them being my fireplace mantle here, but all of the shutters here are all original. So it's this huge bank of shutters. This is the original owner right here. His name was Charles S. Brown. He owned a woodworking machine company called Hall & Brown Woodworking Machine Company. And his house was uh, where he was able to show off all of his wonderful, wonderful woodworking. Like these giant cherry pocket doors, which still move nicely. Take a step back so you can see the scale of them. They're about 10 foot tall and uh, still roll quite nicely, if a bit squeaky. So on to the informal parlor, or the second parlor. Again, missing the mantle here, but I do have a replacement for it. And then more ornate plaster work. Two more sets of the pocket doors back out into the stairwell. Little uh, Harry Potter room here at the bottom of the stairs. So quite nice that. Into the hall, back to the dining room and kitchen. And we're gonna start with the dining room. Of course, there's my lovely paper towels. Ooh. <laughs> But here's the dining room, and of course this room is a bit of storage at the moment, but the, this room is actually completely covered in wainscoting and has a absolutely stunning fireplace with uh, newspapers from the 60s that I just recently dug out. Uh, all the original tile is here as well. Uh, love the green color of that. I seem to have really liked green in this house because a lot of elements in the house are green. And again with the really ornate Beautiful plaster work, including the medallion here, which is all fruit to signify you are in the place of eating. And a really nice built-in china cabinet here, which is mirrored in the back, so uh, it glows when you get the lights on in there. So instead of going back to the hall, we're going to use this door here, 
which is a push double hinged door so that the uh, maid could get your food back to the dining room to the kitchen rather easily. A really ornate push plate here, which uh, I am told in Arabic kind of uh, means uh, hello and goodbye on both sides. Both sides are identical, so let's push this through. Head on in to the kitchen. The kitchen when I got the place was very 70s out um, and really rotten. So we ended up uh, pulling it all apart. You see that was the original door to the butler's pantry. It's since been replaced with a uh, bathroom. And you can see the original uh, beadboard wainscoting here, just tucked behind this full wall they put up. So let's head to the second floor. And after we get done with the third floor, we'll head down there, which does the basement. So back now in the hall, let's go up and uh, see what we can see on the second floor of my old creaky stairs. So let's start back to front. Heading this way, we actually get to the other stairwell in the house, which is the servant stair. You can see uh, this was all actually all painted. I uh, removed all that and reshellacked it. It's a bit dusty, but no less beautiful. Here we have a little closet, which is uh, not of importance, but this here was actually the maid's room. Her name, uh, at least in 1900, was Kitty Hemminghouse. She was 19 in 1800. And the reason why we believe we, she stayed here is because this is the only place the servant stair really goes other than the bathroom and what we believe to be the nursery. As you can see, it needs a little bit of work back here, but I do have two new windows in this room and a sorted uh, woodwork over there and a room I've been working on a lot. These doors, by the way, I point out uh, this is all curly pine, which is a pretty rare species of pine. Most all the doors in the house are this. Um, this doesn't have any finish on it right now, but you can see how much it just glows. It's really, really beautiful wood. So here we have the library, which is a room I've been currently working on quite a bit. We do believe back in the day that this would have been the nursery. And actually the Brown family had a very Unfortunate event as you would in the Victorian era of losing a child who was under a year old. His name was Warren Brown um, He's buried with the family, but we believe since this was most likely the nursery. This is the room. He probably would have passed away in But I've uh, been giving a lot of uh, dedication and uh, love to this room as of recent Especially with the plaster the plaster was really falling apart in this room and I've mostly got it all fixed. You can see some of the repairs there. But uh, Warren, if you're here, I hope you're uh, happy with my, uh, my work ethic and the fact that I'm trying to do it right for you, buddy. So, into the one bathroom in the house, the one original bathroom. This would have been the only bathroom in the house uh, when it was first built. But in 1889, it was pretty rare to have a bathroom at all. In the city of St. Louis, bathrooms were not mandated to be in buildings until the 1950s. So, indoor plumbing, big win in 1889. Uh, there would have been a clawfoot tub here. It's actually in one of the other rooms. The toilet here, and a small sink here. And that's how I'm gonna put it back together. And yeah, even the bathroom doors have that curly pine, which is really incredible. So back out of the maids hall going into what I believe would have been the lady of the house's bedroom. Now the Brown family did move from, or this would have been the male's bedroom, sorry. Now the Brown family did sell the house and move in 1915, but the second family moved here uh, by the name of Joseph, or uh, the second family moved in by the name of the Yenemans. Uh, Joseph Yeneman was a veterinarian and he ran a vet, click, vet clinic in the basement and uh, he and his wife lived here until their deaths in 1945, or around 1945, mid-40s. And uh, yeah, so this would have been both Mr. Brown and Dr. Ginneman's bedroom. This window here is actually what's called a 
Jefferson window, it goes all the way to the floor and would open up into a balcony. The balcony is no longer there, but I plan on replacing that. And you can see the beautiful fireplace here with some of its intricacies. Uh, at some point it was converted to a gas fireplace. It's one of two like that in the house. And you can see all the really amazing woodwork, all the trains and windows. That's back out into the stairwell. You can see the spindles there. And that's back from where we just came from, from the maids hall area, maids stair area. So let's head into the female master bedroom. As you can see, this is a quite a bit bigger bedroom. Again, with more ornate plaster work, including the, these really amazing corbels right here and here. Sorry, it's focusing on a rope there. So there you go. And then of course, since this is the front of the building, this really beautiful bay that looks out into the city. City, of course, being St. Louis, Missouri, for those who are not in the know. Pretty little shot on my street. And then back at the rest of the house. This is the uh, original tub here from the bathroom. It's a claw foot. And uh, the one next to it right here in front is actually the tub I'm going to be replacing it with. Uh, that one has an oak rim on the top, and I really like that. The other one, somebody's tried to re-enamel it four or five times, and uh, it's, it's more work than I want to do to one. And this is her fireplace, her mantle. And it is rather beautiful, especially the tiles here. I think these are really lovely with the flowers, and again, with the green, a bit of blue in there. Um, yeah, Sarah had good taste. I would, I would have to say I enjoy her taste. It's actually quite well ornately carved as well. Little flowers and some little diamond shapes up here and in the center as well. So, good on you, Sarah. I believe this would have been, alcove here would have been where she would have done most of her makeup and stuff like that. So I've got a few little things set up over there. This room's kind of mostly been storage for me since I've been working on things. The house was full of stuff when I first bought it, so a lot of these things are just the remnants of that. So back out here in the hall, let's get up to the third floor. Now, the house is three floors in the front and two in the back. So this is as far as this third floor extends back into the house right here, which is the wall that separates the maid's room from those bedrooms. So you can see out to the back and a little Pepper's ghost of myself here. Hello. <laughs> now, this is where I believe that the children would have slept most likely. Um, they had three other children, the Browns. One was named Alfred. That was their middle son. They had a daughter, Lillian, who was the only daughter and they had the eldest son, which was Charles Brown Jr. Now, Charles Brown Jr. died at the age of 20. And I believe that since these are the areas where he was up here, this is probably where he would have passed away. He died of typhoid fever, which of course was a pretty big thing back then to die of. And uh, I hear not a very nice way to go. Now this is actually up inside the mansard roof. You can see where the brick ends and the wood begins. Everything brick and below is just the cornice. And then everything above is the actual mansard roof itself. And if we go over this way, take a look out the window, you can actually see the St. Louis arch or the gateway arch glowing over that way. If it'll focus back on it. And that right there is downtown St. Louis, along with uh, Grand Center over that way. So pretty good views from up here. We are about 40 or so feet up because most of the ceiling height is quite tall. You see these areas are a bit beat up and that is just from age. Um, there's just one little room up here I want to show you guys, but before I do, I can't not mention my good buddy here, Chippy, 
which is my mummified squirrel that came out of the ceiling, actually. Uh, seems like he was building himself a nest. And, uh, you know, I don't know what happened to him. But uh, he's my little buddy now, so he just hangs out here on the third floor. So moving away from Chippy, we have a little closet here that would have been for coats and stuff and such. Little various items, uh, you know, furs. It's cedar lined, so it would have kept your clothes a bit better smelling, I suppose. Not sure why they use cedar, but I know it's a thing. And this would have been the trunk room, so. You know, back in the day, this would have been, there's no attic in the house, so this would have been mostly for storage and uh, trunks, of course. So that's all of the main floors of the house. Let me take you down to the basement and to see the vet's clinic. Back here in the kitchen now, this is the one entrance uh, from the inside of the building to the basement. So let's go down. Oh, some bubble wrap on the stairs. That's uh, sketchy. <laughs> let's not break my, my neck in here. That wouldn't be fun. So, here we are. Stone foundation, limestone foundation. Um, the ceilings are actually quite tall down here, probably about nine and a half feet tall, if you can believe it, for a basement. Over this way, we have the boiler. Of course, the one back in the day, this is a newer model from about 07. Um, ones back in the day would have taken up this entire area, but all the pipes uh, still feed the same way, which is pretty cool. It's like uh, spaghetti or something. Over this way, you can see there's a huge difference in the floor patterns between here and there. This one being concrete, this one being this really ornate tile. This would have been the me or the vet's clinic. You would have had a little bathroom here. And this would have been the clinic here. So you see all the floors and everything. And there's a door that is uh, since kind of deteriorated that needs to be put back um, that people would have entered from the side of the building. So that's what that looks like. Now, of course, these tiles on here, I think these were maybe acoustic tiles to keep the, dong, uh, the dogs barking or the animals making noises down here, or at least it's my best guess. But you can see the original stuff is actually beadboard, like most of the walls. There's even a little space here where it would have kept uh, various, you know, medicines and stuff for the dogs and cats to care for them. Over here, I would assume would have been a laundry or potentially a bit more of a kitchen. So you can kind of see they've rendered the walls here in some kind of plaster or cement. Now to the far front, which I believe was probably one of the coal rooms and maybe another storage room. You see we're coming up on a wall here. This is the only little door in this wall, which is kind of cool. It's like an old barn door. Uh, both of these two actually, but this one's split at the bottom for whatever reason. They're both hinged. So it was built like that, which is funny. Just a little storage room guy down here. Um, we have a new water supply that I actually put in because the original pipes were still on the ground here. I'm going to dig up the street for this, but uh, I had to get new water supply because I wasn't about to be drinking out of lead. And this is what I believe to be the coal room where they would have stored the coal. Almost need a wider angle lens for this little room here. So looking back through the basement, this uh, ceiling here was also plastered at one point. Uh, we actually had to take it all down because it was failing pretty bad. And it also opens it up to put the systems I need to put back into this building to make it my livable home again. And some insulation. You know, the spookiest thing you'll see on the tour right here is insulation. So let's head back up the stairs and I'll show you guys the rest of the outside of the structure. All right, so now back here at the front of the building with uh, some really beautiful night skies. As you can see, there are multiple bays, these uh, popped out areas on the structure. That was actually a design element to make for sure that uh, it would let more light in because you would get light from all different angles. You see the one original ornate chimney that's still up there. The others would have matched it, but you can see they're just little stubs up there and there are some on the other areas. This is one of the side doors by the dining room. 
This here is the side entrance to the uh, vet's clinic that I just showed you guys downstairs that had the board on it. That's the board there. These are the windows here to the dining room here in the back. And of course, this is the third bay. Because you need to have one on almost every side of the building, all except for one. And uh, of course, there's a big difference between these windows and these windows, and that's because I've redone these windows. That's the maid's room there, those windows. And these are to the library slash nursery. And the door to the kitchen. And the one final door underneath the stairs there to the basement. So that's the house and all of its glory. Uh, it's a pretty mammoth project. Um, all the deferred maintenance over the years has really caused a lot of problems and a bit of decay, but uh, yeah, something we'll tackle. So the reason I shot the video with the lantern as opposed to having lights turned on is I have pretty limited power, so I couldn't light up most of the rooms anyway, so it's easier to do it that way. And I wanted to give you guys a look of what I kind of feel when I walk out of the house every night after I get done working and kind of what it is in there. And I guess a lot of people would say it looks kind of spooky. It doesn't really to me. I think it's always kind of been really wonderful and, and, and uh, I don't know, has a warm feeling to it. It's a really nice, good feeling to it, a good vibe to this house. And, uh, you know, you can tell there was a, a lot of families who had a lot of love and a lot of life lived here. And uh, exploring the history and, and doing all that's been a really fun element of this project, if not the funnest element of the whole thing. Um, you know, if you guys do end up spotting anything, though, any shadows or whatever, let me know. It's probably a car passing or something. But uh, it'll be interesting to see what you guys uh, find when you guys pick apart the video. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. As always, uh, I appreciate you guys. So uh, yeah, thank you guys. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.